G'day, Michael from Ironbark Game Studio, and welcome to the fourth part of this Blender Beginner series, where I'll be taking you through a number of the shortcuts and tools to edit meshes in Blender. So to start off with, I have my cube selected, and I'm going to press Tab to toggle into Edit Mode. You can also press Tab again to go back into Object Mode, and we can see this changing in the top left-hand corner of the 3D viewport up here. You can also click this drop down and select them manually, but Tab is obviously a lot quicker. You can press 1 to change the select mode to vertex, 2 to change the select mode to edge, and 3 will change it to face. And we can also see up the top left here as we press 1, 2, and 3, it's changing between vertex, edge, and face. You can also hold down shift and press 1, 2, and 3 to have multiple of them selected. So we have vertices, edges, and faces available to be selected. If you hit one again, that's going to deselect the other two. We can press Alt Z, and that's going to toggle on X ray. And X ray is really useful in edit mode, as this allows you to partially see through uh, the object and select vertices, edges, and faces on the other side. So I can select this vertex here, which is actually on the other side of my cube. So Alt Z will just toggle that on and off. It's also this button up here, toggle X ray. And we can use this in object mode as well. It's not exclusive to edit mode. So inside of edit mode, all of your selection and transformation tools learned in the previous two videos are also going to work here. So for example, we can select this vertex. We can press G to grab it. And we can constrain it to an axis. So I'll press X and that's going to constrain it to the X axis, Z, Y. And we can also just type in values as well. So if I go one, that's going to move it along one unit on the y-axis. Again, right-click to cancel, left-click to confirm the move. If I press 2 to go into my edge selection, I could select this edge here, and I could press S to scale it. Because I've only got one edge selected, it's only going to scale in the one direction, which is on the x-axis, but we could press X anyway to constrain it to that. And here we could type in something such as 0.5, and that's going to half the length of the edge there. All of the other selection methods work as well. So if I go back into Vertex and I just left click and drag, we have our box selection. It's going to select all of these vertices here. If we press C, left click and drag over the top of vertices, or middle mouse click over the top of vertices, it's going to select and deselect, right click to cancel that. Or we could use a selection method like pressing A, that's going to select all of our vertices. Double tapping A or pressing Alt A will deselect everything as well. There's a few additional ways to move vertices, edges, faces around a uh, mesh in edit mode. So if I select a vertex here and I double tap G, that's going to enable me to slide that vertex along existing edges, which is really quite handy. Right click to cancel, left click to confirm. And the other methods, say I select this edge here, I can press Shift and V. That's also going to allow me to slide the edge, but it's going to give me a little bit more control. I can sort of slide it along different angles as well, as opposed to just double tapping G, we can only slide it along one direction. So the number of tools in edit mode is quite large, so I'm just going to go through some of the main ones here. I'm going to go into face selection, and I'm going to select one of these faces, and I'm going to press E to extrude a piece of geometry. So this is going to pull out new geometry from my selection. Again, left click to confirm, right click to cancel. If I do cancel it though, it still creates the extrusion, but it is hidden here. So if I press G and X just to grab it out, we can still see that it is there. It was just in the exact same spot as the selected piece. Another common tool is the loop cut tool. So if I press Control R, and then hover over an edge, we're gonna get this yellow outline. If I mouse wheel scroll, I can increase or decrease the number of edges. If I left click, that's going to confirm the number of edges and it's going to allow me to slide the edge along here. I then need to left click again to confirm the movement. If I just undo that and add a new loop cut, if I right click, 
that's going to cancel the movement and it's going to add the loop cut in the exact center of that edge I'm sliding along. So again, Control R, mouse wheel to add more and left click. I can slide them along, I can right click to cancel the movement, that's going to put them in the center, or I can left click to put them wherever I want. If I select a face and press I, that's going to inset the face. So if I just move my mouse, we can see that's increasing, decreasing the size of that inset there. I can left click to confirm that. Whenever we make an edit like this, we're going to have this little tool pop up in the bottom left hand corner. If I just open this up, I've got a bunch of options here. So if I'm not happy with the thickness, I can manually change this in here, or I can give it an exact value, say 0 0.3, and hit enter, and that's going to move that edit there. As soon as you left click deselect it or do something else, that menu is going to disappear. I'm going to select this top face now, and I'm going to press Ctrl B, and that is going to bevel the edges. Just moving the mouse is going to increase or decrease the bevel. If I mouse scroll wheel, that is going to add additional edges along the bevel. If I left click, that will confirm the move. And again, we have our tool pop up here, which we can make adjustments. So the number of segments is the number of lines I was creating with my mouse wheel. And the width here is just the distance between the edges. If I go into vertex by pressing one and just select one of these vertices here, and press shift control B, that is going to bevel the vertex itself. Again, mouse scroll wheel can add additional vertices in here. Left click will confirm, and we'll get this menu which we can make further adjustments if we desire. Another useful tool is the knife tool. So if you press K, that is gonna open up the knife tool here. And we can hover over edges, vertices, or faces. And if we left click, that is going to add a point and we can add a number of points to our mesh. If we press enter, that is going to confirm and it's going to convert those points into vertices and edges in between those vertices here. A couple of useful things with the knife tool. If you hold down shift, that is going to snap that point to the center of an edge there. And if you hold down C, that is going to cut through the mesh. So once I've pressed C and I add in my cuts like this and hit enter, that's gonna create cuts on the other side as well. So if I press Alt Z to look through my mesh, we can see that we have cuts on the other side that's cut through. If you select a vertex and you press V, V is going to rip the selection so it's going to create a duplicate of that vertex and allow me to move this out like so. Left click to confirm. We now have a hole in our mesh. If I select a face and press Alt M and then select split selection, that is going to cut around all of the edges and rip it out as a separate uh, face. If we have multiple vertices on top of each other, it can be hard to select them, but they are definitely there. So if I press Alt Z to go into X-Ray and I left click and drag, I can select both of the overlapping vertices like so. If we want to remove those overlapping vertices, we can then click M for merge. And I'm just gonna click on by distance. So vertices that are essentially on top of each other so they're 0 0.0001 meters apart, they're going to merge together. If I try to move, deselect this, select again, and then move it, we can see that those vertices are now one. Unlike this side, we still have those two vertices overlapping. So I'm just gonna marquee select all of these. Gonna click on M, merge by distance. And now all of our vertices have been merged together that are sitting on top of each other. If we have an empty gap on our mesh, we can select the outside edges or vertices, and we hit F to fill in that gap with a new face. If we have an empty gap and there's more than four sides around it, 
and we hit F to fill the face, it is going to create an endon. So an endon is a shape with more than four sides. In this case, it has nine. So typically, we're not going to want that. So instead of that, I'm going to press Alt and F. And that's going to fill the selection with tries. But it kind of ruins the edges looping around our cube here. So I'm just going to undo that one. And instead, I'm going to go up to Face. I'm going to go down to Grid Fill. And assuming you have an equal number of edges on each side, it's going to fill it in with a nice grid like so. If you do have a situation where you have an end gone and you want to get rid of it, if we go into Vertex Selection, select two opposite vertices, and press J. That's going to create an edge between those two. If we select this top vertex now and this bottom one and hit J again, it's going to create an edge in between the two, but it's also going to detect an edge which is already there and going to create a vertex in the center as well. So this can be another way to fill in faces. Wrapping up the edit mode tools with a few more techniques. If we select opposite edges, like so, but not the top or bottom, and then we right click in the viewport and we go to bridge edge loops here. That's going to fill in the faces in between them. So it's kind of similar to our grid fill. If I select a vertex and then press O, that is going to activate proportional editing. So I press G to grab. We have this circle which appears around our selected vertex and when I move it, it's also going to move the vertices around it. I can use the mouse wheel to decrease or increase the influence that the movement is having and the fall off which is going to affect the other vertices. In the top here, this is the proportional editing tool and we can change some of the settings such as the fall off and we can also set it to connected only. So if we have two objects but there's no vertices connecting them, then editing one side of it won't edit ones that are not connected to it. With a selection of vertices, edges or faces, we can press Shift W and that's going to bend the mesh. This is probably going to work better in a side on view. So I'm going to press 1 to go into the side orthographic view and Shift W and here we can bend those vertices. Another useful tool is the shear tool. So I'm going to select this face on the side here and press Shift Control Alt S and move the mouse. It's a little bit awkward from the side view because it works on the perspective of the camera. So again, I'm going to go into side view, shift control alt s and I'm going to move this along. And it looks like it's sort of scaling it, rotating it along the x-axis. And this is quite useful, particularly compared with trying to rotate it. If I press R to try and rotate it, we can see it's not really behaving along the same axis. Whereas shift control alt s is going to shear it along that direction. The next tool I'm going to show off is the Spin tool. So if I select this top face here and go into my toolbars, I'm going to select Spin. And currently it's going to spin around the Z axis, which isn't particularly useful for us. So I'm going to come into the tool settings here. I'm going to change it from the Z to the Y. So I'm just going to type in Y1, Z0. And I'm going to move this axis so it's spinning around a nicer point then change the angle let's go 90 degrees like so sort of move this into a nicer position and here we could adjust some other settings like the number of steps which is the number of divisions it's going to have and we've also got the uh, the center in here as well which could manually move from there so in edit mode there's a few additional selection methods which are really useful so if i got this face selected here and I press Control Numpad Plus, that is going to grow the selection, and Control Numpad Minus will shrink the selection. If I hold down Alt and left mouse button, click on an edge, that's going to select the full loop of either vertices, edges, or faces. So it works the same in vertex selection, Alt, left click on an edge, Alt, left click on an edge. If we select a vertex, edge, or face, and hold down control, and then left mouse button on another one, that's going to select the shortest path in between, selecting all the vertices, edges, or faces in between them. If we make a selection, and then press Shift G, 
we can select similar. So we could select faces with a similar area, for example, which in this case is all of them. Inside the select menu, there are a range of interesting tools that don't have shortcuts. So for example, we have a select random, which is going to randomly select faces. Or we've got a select checker deselect, so we do have to have a selection first. That's going to create a checker selection. And this is also where we can select bad geometry. So we press 1 to go into vertex selection. Go select. Select all by trait. And then non-manifold. Which currently there isn't any at the moment. In edit mode there are also some additional options for deleting parts of a mesh. So if I select these vertices here and press X, I can either delete the vertices, edges, or faces. So if I select the vertices, it's going to select all of the associated edges and faces. If I just select the edges, it's going to delete the edges which are associated to that selection only. Press X and just delete the face. It's going to only delete the face which is formed by those vertices. The other way to delete parts of a mesh, say I've selected this edge loop with Alt left click and I press X and I only want to delete the edges along there, I can go to Dissolve Edges and it's going to essentially delete that edge loop there without affecting any of the other geometry. The final thing to talk about is normals. So normals describe the orientation of a polygon surface. So you can have a front face and a back face. So if we look in the overlays and we come down to face orientation here and we turn that on, most of your geometry is probably going to appear blue. It becomes a problem when it appears red. So if you ever see a bit of red geometry, so I'm going to select this face here and I'm going to press Alt N and it's going to bring up the normals menu. If I click flip, we can see this face now turns red. So this is the back face. The back faces should always be facing inwards in your geometry and you shouldn't be able to see them. So if this ever occurs, select the faces that are back to front, press Alt N and then go flip. Or if you've got multiple faces that you want to flip, you can select everything, press Alt N and you can go recalculate outside. That should do a pretty good job of trying to figure out which way the faces should be pointing. Thanks for watching this video, give us a like and subscribe if you found it useful, and leave a comment if you have a question or your own Blender tip. You can download a free set of PDF notes for this series from the Patreon link in the description, and I'll see you in the next one.